Howdy there folks, this is Lapidary Dave. I just wanted to have a quick chat on the video you're about to watch. Um, the booth that I'm filming, all this used gear you're about to see, in my opinion, seems to be a little bit on the higher end of what these machines should be going for and what I've seen them going for in the past. So, you know, don't think just because you see something in this video that it can't be had for a lot less. Also, Lapidary is like in the middle of a renaissance in America, and machines are kind of skyrocketing in price. So just because you hear me mention that I can find a $100 10-inch saw or a $100 four-wheel, six-wheel grinder doesn't mean that it might be as easy as others who can't make it to some of the larger gem shows out in America. And uh, yeah, so keep looking online if you're looking for used gears. Um, Tucson and Buena Vista Gem Show kind of, to me, seem to be the best places to get used gear. So it's sometimes it's worth flying out to these shows. Might only cost you a couple hundred bucks to get there, but you can leave with thousands of dollars worth of gear for sometimes, you know, a couple hundred bucks. Anyway, love y'all. Thanks for watching. And do all the like and subscribe stuff if you feel like it. Alrighty. So, some nice used machines, some new machines, grinders, tumblers, polishers, saws, etc. Fastening machines and whatnot. I will say, if you are after buying used machines during the Tucson or Denver Miners Co op, you're gonna wanna come first thing when the show opens. A lot of the best stuff can be sold in the first day or two. Like I imagine this old Phantom over here is already sold. Uh, eight inch, two wheel machine. Saw combo, could have went for 300, 400 bucks. You take it out of the show, you clean it up, you can easily get 1200 for it. So you're gonna wanna get here ASAP when it comes to buying used machines. Um, during the Tucson Miners Co-op, there's a lot of, um, there's a bunch of folks selling used machines, but here at Denver, I've bought in, many things from this gentleman over the years. Here's a cool water grinder. Good for making those large Brazilian style flames or polishing large pieces of petrified wood and whatnot. Is it pneumatic? 600 bucks and it comes with the diamond polishing pads and whatnot. I think it's pneumatic, I don't really know where would the air go? One of these? I don't know, you gotta forgive me. The price of used machines have definitely gone up quite a bit in the last, I don't know, maybe five or six years. Uh, one gentleman actually accused me of damaging the used market from showing off Tucson and Denver used gear. Here's the Uncle Tom Lotto Tumbler, perhaps one of the best rotary tumblers in the industry. Not rotary, but vibro tumblers, excuse me. Here's a slightly older one, but still fantastic. I absolutely love the Lotto Tumbler. Here's a Griffin Diamond Bandsaw. I have one of these at Mr. Medina's studio. He's had for maybe, I don't know, 20, 30 years and we never used it. I bought a, two new, brand new blades for it and, and, um, with the idea of making a video and we never got around to it. That's probably a four inch, oh yeah, about a four inch width there, but you wouldn't really want to cut something that's four inches on this type of saw. It doesn't cut particularly fast, but you can get some cool curves on it. This is 465. This is the Griffette Diamond Grinder. It's used for stained glass a lot. What I like to do with this machine is I take this off and I put their little blades that people use to make channels for adding the solder on stained glass. But I use it to, to groove a perfectly consistent groove around cabs for just laying a gold or silver wire and making a real simple wire wrap. Look at this old girl. Rocking and rolling. That is 
most people won't get it, but stuff like this just totally makes me so happy to see. This thing is definitely older than I am. $369, I'd love to see this thing in action. You know, rich guys like old cars. I like old crusty Labrador. <laughs> I think this was here last year, if I'm not mistaken. Do you work here? Was this here last year? I'm not entirely sure. I did not work the last show, but you might have had one. Nice. Nice old Highland Park. Oh, yeah. Older than we are. <laughs> I know. I'm like, half the things in here are older than we are. But, Somebody you know, got it. 1650. Oh, fantastic. Absolutely, for sure. Until we catch up. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, God only knows how long that'll be. <laughs> $1,800 for this old Ultra Tech. This is before they started using the digital masts. Very nice. The digital index, I mean. This is real smooth. It doesn't look like it's been refurbished. It just kind of looks like it wasn't really used. These are fun. This is like a Sears machine, is it? No, Gem Maker. I've seen this made by Sears. This is crazy. So this is a weight and you would clamp a rock inside of here, put it over here and somehow hang it off. And the weight would like pull the stone onto a piece that's being cut. Sometimes people put saw blades on here. It's hard to believe, but um, yeah. <laughs> these would hold saw blades. I've seen people actually put wheels on these and work the sides over here. These are really cool. I've never seen one with the weight. I'm sorry, I don't exactly know how it's being used on here, but the weight is super cool. It's a very old timer style um, of cutting. I was talking to Sherman Rollin from the um, Highland Park Company, and he was telling me that people get rid of the auto feed right away. Old timers want to use weight. They can hold a rock, they know how hard it is, and they know how much weight they need to put on that rock to pull against the blade to get it to cut fast as possible. Where the auto feed's going at a consistent speed, the, the old timer can feel the weight and get it to cut faster than the auto feed every time. And they're cutting holes into the brand new $6,000 saws just so that they can use weight. Ex excuse my excitement. That, that kind of stuff I love. Here's an old belt sander and polisher by Highland Park. Oops, try not to break stuff. I do believe this spins at 1775. It's not like a bull wheel. Um, oh, it has a high and a low speed, but the, yeah, it is 1725. So it does spin at the same speed as something like a Cab King or a Diamond Pacific Genie. So this would be used for cabbing. If it was spinning at closer to 3250 RPM, then it would be used with silicon carbide with no water and then you'd come over here on this side at a slower speed to get a good polish. But this one is intended for traditional cabbing. My good friend Steve Kapeski has one of these. He has the modern version of it. Um, I don't believe his has a foam back which is used for contouring the cab so you don't get flat spots. I hear a lot of people buy these nowadays for making knives because of the huge surface area. <laughs> that is an old switch. Probably twice my age right there. I love it. Here's a nice old 10 inch Highland Park. Old school for 550. Not too much to talk about when it comes to this. The motor looks really cool and rugged. You can use oil or you can use water. I love that it has a nice clamp. It has a system that you can manually push through for cutting. I have a very good friend of mine who actually helps me um, book some interviews with folks in Tucson who took one of the new Highland Park saws and actually fabricated his own system here and it actually is a lot nicer than this one. But for 550, 
it's definitely worth it. Uh, however, you can find stuff like this for closer to 200. Uh, I tell people if you can't make it to these shows to find used equipment, check Facebook Marketplace. You can search all of Facebook Marketplace at one time and you can find saws and grinders like this sometimes for a hundred bucks. Also, you can look up all of Craigslist at one time using different websites. You just type it in because you know isn't, there's no lapidary section of Craigslist. Is it going to be under the arts and crafts section? Is it going to be under the machinery? You know what I mean? You don't really know, but it, the websites that search all of Craigslist will use keywords. This is the modern Cab King. You could tell by the satin finish. It looks like they did change the switch. Uh, some of the switches were going out on people. It's not a big deal. Cab King is a fantastic company. I absolutely love Cab King, and they were just sending people switches to replace themselves. You just unscrew it, but it does look like that they uh, changed the switch. One of the best machines in the industry. Top three for sure. I love my Cab King, and I love the people from Cab King. They are fantastic people. I hope to see them at the Tucson show this year. They are still in Kino, but I believe they're in a different place than they were a couple years ago. I think they share a booth with Covington now. Some just knickknacks, valves, lights, piercing saw blades. Yeah, this is the blade that I put on the Griffat. And I put this on there, adjust my height put a cab on there and groove a perfect groove around the cab which leaves me a perfect channel that I can just lay a wire in for really quick wire wraps. I'm not a good wire wrapper but it lets me make you know nice wire wraps for folks that do enjoy that look without really having to learn the technique and if you people aren't into wire wraps people will still like the pendant because the wrap is just there to hold the stone from the side you won't even notice it a lot of the time brushes just little tiny jars three for a dollar and put a bunch of crushed opals up in there some nice apophyllite inside of the cork glass jar I wonder if this is showing off the cork glass jar that he has for sale or if he's trying to sell that piece by itself this fly is on me medicine fly in some showcases. Anyway, if you folks are into this kind of stuff, come check out this gentleman at the Miners Co-op here in uh, Denver. I don't know if this gentleman is at the Miners Co-op in Tucson. A lot of these folks are, like McKay over there and um, my friends who are over there and this gentleman who sells Amazonite, but I don't know if this particular seller is or not. But yeah I'm gonna go see if he will sell these books <laughs> I love old lapidary books I'm starting to get quite a big library <laughs>